Hi, I'm Antiki Khan and welcome to another CGTuts.com tutorial. Today we're going to be um, modeling and rendering a Microsoft Zune HD portable media player. And let's get started. Middle mouse click or press F5 to get the different viewports. And since we don't have a top or bottom, just change the top camera to back. And the first thing we have to do is put our reference images in. So select the back, then go to Mode, View Settings, and right here under Image, select the first one, navigate to the References folder inside the archive, and select the back. And we actually have to resize. The Cinema 4D likes to resize our reference images when we put them in. So all you have to do is put in either the height or the width. I'm just going to choose the width and with the keep aspect ratio radio button ticked it should get the correct height and there we go for the front do the same thing now for the right side we actually have to put in the height because the right and front have different width so 839 okay so the first thing we're going to be modeling is the inner, the front, this inner gold portion. We're not going to do the screen just yet. We're going to focus on this part and then model the screen. So what you can do is create a spline, rectangular spline, and change the width until you've got something appropriate. There we go. And the height. Okay, that's looking pretty good. And press C to make it editable and just go ahead and select the points tool right click and create outline and it should match up perfectly yes it does and we also want to create this bottom portion but I'll show you a nice little shortcut instead of doing that we'll actually do this part and then just copy this inner spline you'll know what I mean when, I, when we do it Select these four outer points while holding down shift. And we are going to chamfer them. So right click, chamfer them until the radius is perfect for the reference image. Okay. Now do the same for these inner points. The smaller rectangle will have a different chamfer value, which is why we couldn't chamfer before we created the outline. And chamfer again. And try to get it... It sits right between the shadow. Okay. It's looking good. And name this outer ring because it's the outer ring of the front and duplicate it now select the knife tool and just holding down shift create a knife knife some points right where this bottom portion is and select all six points while holding down shift these bottom points right here go to selection invert and just press delete now we want to work on these points right here again with the knife tool holding down shift again don't have to be exact we're going to move the points okay move this point until it's just about the center of the curve same with this point and then just copy their x values for this point for these points Remember to make it an inverse. So 
so make it positive. Okay, now select these two bottom points and bring them down. Looks like we actually didn't get in the center, so just press T and scale them in the x-axis. Okay, now select all four points and chamfer. Okay. Alright, so now we can extrude. Select the extrude nerves object. Rename, actually rename this to bottom. And drag both in. You'll notice when you go out into the perspective viewport that the, only the bottom spline is being extruded, but that's easy to fix. Just select the extrude nerves object and select hierarchical. And we should also move these points forward. These splines forward. Okay. And reduce the extrusion. Also we want to fillet the cap, so fillet cap for both. Constrain, we want to keep the size. Radius of 1 should do good. Okay, looking good. And increase the steps to 2, just to give it a smoother look. Okay. It's looking pretty good. Now let's do the screen. This is actually going to be pretty easy. Select the bottom. Sc control click out of it. Make sure to rename this outer ring. and we want to create these points up here so with the knife tool again switch to the points maybe we should hide these okay switch to the knife hold and make a knife point right here select these four bottom points we do not need them anymore and just delete Take these points and drag them up. Be good if we could get it perfectly where the other points are. Okay. Okay, and champ for them. Okay, you'll notice inside of the screen, it's like the screen is actually made of two different parts. You've got the outside black, which encases it, and then you've got the actual OLED, which is, you can vaguely see it right here. So we actually need to make this a cutout. So create another rectangular spline, decrease the width, zoom in so you can see the faint there we go it's easier to see here okay 
press C to make it editable and move these two points down and move these two points up and connect the two points you can delete them or you can create create a empty null object by pressing alt g and name that storage and just hiding it in case you make a mistake oh right okay when you connect the splines it'll reset all of them to hard interpolation so what you can do is set this point to Bezier, select all the points, and then select hard interpolation. And it's still a Bezier curve when you select it with both. Now when you hit connect, the chamfer stays as a curve and not flat. Okay. Now we can extrude this one too, but let's move it back, get the Z position. I'm just making sure all the points are in the same position over here. There we go. Let's fix this little mistake. Switch to the object axis tool and move it to where your spline is. We actually need to be pretty exact on this. Okay. Now paste the Z position. There we go. Problem fixed. Alright, let's extrude this. We can just go ahead and copy this extrude nobs object and delete them. Call this screen. And we actually should not extrude it as much. Because let's look at one of the reference images. Let me see if I can find... Okay, let's zoom in. You can actually see how far down this goes until you hit screen. So, select this and decrease the movement until it's good, relative to the rest of what we've modeled so far. And set both ends to cap. Four should be good. Okay, now to model the screen really simple all we have to do is let's call this black and this actually screen so select these four points Oops. 
selection, invert, and delete the rest of them. So now it, it's, it is a single solid object, or at least it looks like it. We have the screen, and then the black surrounding it. Okay, and now on the front all we have to do is the button and the zoom logo. The button is also easy. Select the black yep, select the black and duplicate that as well and select button name it button again with the knife tool switch to the points select the knife tool and create a knife point right where the button is now all we have to do is select again all these points, selection, invert, and delete. Select these points, hard interpolation. There we go. Move it out just a little bit. And this is going to get its own extrude nubs because the radius on the fill cap is a lot more than the rest. You only need to really do a fill cap on the front. Constrain again. And reduce the radius. One and a half convex. Three steps should give it a smooth look. We really want it to look like a smooth transition. Okay. sticks out just a little bit. Okay, and now the zoom logo. It might look like it's mo like it's painted on, but it's actually a different material on top of it. I actually had a chance to hold a zoom and when I put my finger over underneath the zoom logo it's actually a different like frosted glass almost on top of the material so we need to create that I have a you can go ahead and open the zoom HD the zoom illustrator file that'll also be in the archive under resources and Right now, for now, since we're only modeling the front, all we really need is these four paths. So select this path and delete it. Okay. Paste it into our scene and just scale it down until whoops okay there we go this also is going to be extruded change this to hierarchical remember we want uh, all of these splines to be affected and the movement to one not even one point two subtle details it's 
there we have it on the front just barely able to see okay one more small little detail when we are actually rendering the material we want the edge of the screen right here to have just a little bit of a curve that way when the light box that's going to be in the HDR we're going to be rendering it with will just slip off just a little bit so select the screen we have it set to article when you press C it'll distribute each one into its own extrude nerves object selected the black and this time it'll make them polygons select all of them objects connect I'm just gonna save the black in our storage and now I'm gonna connect them whenever I connect extrude nerves I also I always make it a point to switch to polygon mode and select optimize just to get rid of any n-gons or extra points that we don't really need so hide the screen basically hide everything until we can see the outer edge right here okay so we want to bevel slightly bevel this right here so selection loop in edge mode okay make sure we have it correctly selected and just really slightly bevel so right click bevel and just enough to get what we're looking for convex increase the subdivision to maybe three okay and decrease the fog angle to 25 the reason being Cinema 4D has just a little bit of a problem rendering this beveled edge on the test that I did on the other Zoom HD models I did it'll get pretty weird with the reflection so the solution is just to decrease the fog angle since it's such a small detail we won't even notice that it's not as smooth as it could be okay bring everything back and that is the front we could do with some cleaning up let's just move this we don't want it to get in the way of the middle when we get to it okay alright now let's start with the back we could have started with the middle but we don't have a top and bottom reference image so we wouldn't know how far back the back actually goes because the bottom is not flat the edges are actually at an angle and we don't know how far the middle angles go back so if we do the back we can do the middle so to do the middle all you have to do is create a rectangle a cube switch to the right viewport and decrease the width alright we can actually get the height from the outer ring spline that we have let's see 838 same with the width 431 all right now switch to the back viewport 
and okay so duplicate the cube actually before we duplicate we'll go to the points mode select these two bottom points make sure only select visible points is off move these points up okay and duplicate it this will be the this will be the bottom rubber and this we can just call back so for the bottom rubber select these points move them down All right, just create a small, tiny space, and go back to the outer ring, select these two points, and get the Y position. Okay, so we can select these two points, objects, connect. All right. Go to Polygons, select all the Polygons, Selection, Set Selection, and name this Rubber Bottom. This way when we connect them, we can still select the all the Polygons for the bottom. Objects Connect, and you can see the Selection tag is still there. Okay. see the edge we made. Let's hide the bottom polygons for now. So go to selection. Hide selected. And let's work on these on this. Go to the knife. Switch to the loop tool. Switch to loop. And once you get close to the center press shift. and put 50% in. Okay. Switch to the edge tool, selection, loop, and bevel the with a subdivision of 2 and make sure the type is linear. Okay. Select these two middle points, these two middle edges, and also do the same to those. We're basically doing the same thing with the with the bottom with the button on the front. Make sure again that on the selection tool only select visible elements is still off. Move these points up. and bevel them. So the edge tool. Reselect only select visible element. These two edges. Okay, so now all we have to do is bevel this, making sure convex is on, and the radius 
a subdivision of 3 should do just as well. Okay. Select the back, go to selection, unhide all. Okay. So now all we have to do is create the edges over here to be able to pull those back and create the unflattened edge. So switch to the polygon tool and again the knife tool. Go to the plane. YZ. Make sure own select visible elements is off again. Selection, loop. Copy the X position. Okay. So to move the points back, all we have to do is Select all the points and then make sure only select visible elements is on again. Deselect all these points on the outer edge. Okay. Switch to the right viewport and just move the edges back. And now we're starting to see the beveled edge. Alright, we want to create a little bit more definition over there. So switch to the edge tool. Alright, we still have those selected. Selection, loop, and we're going to bevel these. Linear, subdivision of zero. Just a really slight bevel. Just to create a harder edge. There we go. Okay. And that didn't help it helped a little bit, but the edge over here and here still do not look flat. Another easy fix, just turn the fog angle down. 62 did it for me. It will be a little bit different for you because you aren't moving the points in the exact same place that I'm moving them in. Okay. looking pretty good alright now we can these edges right here select the back there we go select we're selecting these edges here to bevel them. Make sure to be holding down shift. And switch to the front or back viewport. Doesn't matter. I'm going to be using the back, just to the front, just to say stay consistent. And let's bevel them. We're going to be following this edge right here. Convex.
and subdivision of 20 should do just fine. I don't want it since the bevel on the spline is looks almost perfect. I don't want the bevel on the polygon object to look poor in comparison. Alright, that actually looks a lot better than I expected it would on the first try. And we're not getting any weird shading. That's really good. And there it is. Okay. So to fix this, just turn the fong angle down again. It seems this edge is a little messed up. So select this edge if you're having this problem. And slide it. There we go. Problem fixed. Let's see if we can... Yep, we can turn the fog angle back up. Okay. Now it's time to do the booling of where the screws are and the zoom logo. Okay, let's start with the screws. Select the back object and create a cylinder. Set the orientation to plus Z or negative Z, doesn't matter. Alright, move it out. Move it around, we're in the back viewport. Start rotating it to get the proper orientation. This will actually be easier in the top. Go to the top viewport in the perspective view and rotate it so that it is perpendicular to the back edge almost okay there it is We actually don't need that big of a height. Move it in. And if you notice, on the edge, it's actually polished. It's not just a clean booling. It's actually beveled a little bit, and then the actual booling for the cylinder. So we actually need to bottle that. Go into the perspective view. Alright. Maybe we should change the radius just a tad. Okay, 15 should do... 16. Alright, press C to make the cylinder editable. We can go ahead and hide the back for now. Cinema 40 has a weird problem with cylinders. Let me show you what I mean. If we select all these faces, it just disconnects. Just delete those and optimize to get rid of the unused points that we don't have anymore. Close the polygon and then just add a point. Single point. Make sure the position is 0 and 0 in X and Y relative to the cylinder. Okay, so now when we move, it all moves with it. So 
bevel extrusion make sure the type is set to user and start to model out the extrusion okay bring the back back go to the top viewport it's actually uh, going to the cylinder turn the fong angle down until the shading gets off because that will affect the back when we do the booling so go to the top and just move the cylinder in let's just move the cylinder in until the edge meets. Okay, there we go. Now we could duplicate, get the points, but shortcut, let's just use symmetry. So let me create a new symmetry object. Okay, now we've got symmetry on the y-axis and create another symmetry object and set the plane to XZ. There we go. Use the object axis tool, move it up. There we go, much better. Select the back, move it above the screws, create a new blue object, and drag them in. And there you go. Should actually move these out because the edge is actually eating into it. So deselect the blue cylinder and move it out just a little bit. Okay, there we go. Much smoother. Okay, and we can actually take this, duplicate it, and reuse these screws as our screws. rotated 180 degrees knife it set to loop and only select we should actually do the same thing we did to the front over here so select these polygons move them out select all these points selection invert and just delete them we don't need them anymore but if you go to the points the points are still there so make sure to hit optimize whenever you're deleting polygons or edges instead of points okay close polygon hole and just add another point zero zero okay let's scale this down Okay, 
and what type of screw let's just do a nice and simple extrude inner and extrude All right, now let's extrude. Okay, much better. All right. 